Hi, she's Trixie and I'm Sarah and this is our Yarn World, a place where we come to share the love of yarn crafts and all crafts and what they provide us and what we hope they give you. We're on episode 77 today yes. and we have a bit of things accomplished and started, especially on your end, this ridiculous. And I have a couple of things to share with you on where I'm at with some of my projects to the end of the year and yeah. yeah should be good yeah so I uh, finished the mandala blanket that really and heavy it, one it is heavy it is large so just to make sure that you see it all I took a little video and I'm gonna place it at the end of this one so I'll show you a little snippet of it now but um, if you stay to the end of the video, you'll see the rest, the whole thing in its entirety. And it really is pretty. So mandelas are fun to work with. And, and when you choose to pair it with a neutral, it really comes out so pretty. Oh, God. It's heavy. It's really, really heavy. Dense. But a lot of earth tones and... At the, at the top, it ended up having some pinks, and I thought it kind of looked like a sunset. So it's kind of like earth tones all the way to a sunset. It's mm -hmm. really pretty. But you'll see that more at the end of the video. And then I started a mandela. I was going to make this into a blanket. Just remember that. Because it's only a scarf. Um, I, I do have fun doing mandelas, but, um, things weren't lining up for me the way I wanted them to this time, and I, I think this turned out really, really cute. It's just that I think I need a different pattern. Um, my daughter's anniversary is coming up, um, October 7th. When this will be published. Yeah. No. You publish it on the Fridays, right? Right. But that's next Friday, isn't it? My anniversary is this Friday. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got a little uh, confused. Sorry. Yes. So when you see this, it will be her sixth anniversary with her husband. Mm -hmm. And they, so they, of course, got married in the fall. And mm -hmm. she loves fall and all of its entirety. And so I did some tumbling leaves. And this was going to be a blanket, but it is now a scarf. And it is for you. Thanks, Mom. So, yep, now she can have a scarf and it will be, represent everything she loves about fall. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I started a new project and it's also fall colors. Whoop. Move my cup out of the way here because my stitch markers are like banging on it. Anyway, um, everything is in my big duffel bag. Duffel uh, canvas bag that we got from Hobby Lobby. If you can remember that uh, episode. episode that we talked about what we got at Hobby Lobby and how it, it really helps our projects because we, we can carry them around with us when we're going places. Anyway, because I make blankets, I got the big double bag and it holds my projects and the yarn and my, my hooks and my bag with, you know, the scissors and... And uh, all the stuff. But anyway, I am making a granny stripe double stranded blanket in fall colors. It's so cool. So it's, it starts out in the reds and, and neutral, but then you go into the, the, the greens and um, oranges and then you get the browns and the yellows and now I'm going into 
more like a rust in the yellow. So, and it's all double stranded and it's um, granny stripes and it's going so quickly and I love it because the Mandela took me two months to finish. I usually can get blankets done within two weeks <laughs> and that one took me two months. Um, because I was using a five millimeter hook with two strands and I had 200 stitches across instead of just 100. So, um, yeah, I, I did 100 in this or 101 and I'm using my 10 millimeter hook so I'm getting larger spaces done at a time and it's really fun and I really love it. So. I don't know who this is going to be for. When I was over at Sarah's earlier watching Little Canyon, he fell in love with this thing. He was hugging it and he wanted to learn how to crochet and he wanted a hook like mine and all the things. So that boy is going to be a crocheter, I can tell. Mm -hmm. He loves all things that we do. and um, He likes projects. Yeah, and he also likes things that he can just wrap his arms around and hug. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I really have a feeling that he'll be a crocheter when he gets older. Not sure about Olivia yet because she's so much more on the move than he is. Mm -hmm. But um, she may be too. That would be so fun if we could get both of them doing it. I could just imagine what they can make. All the toys. All the pillows and all the blankets. But... So what do you got to show us? Well, okay, so story time. Okay. You might come. Um, how do I say this? Um, a bit of a update. I have some friends staying with us right now and uh, one of uh, it's it's a dog it's a mom and a daughter mm -hmm. and uh it's temporary but it's been pretty fun to have their company and um and the kids love it and kids do love it and they got a friend that just gets to stay forever uh, i mean that's well how they feel uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> um the daughter is six and she is really, 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 really dear. And she even made me this bracelet the other day. Oh, It's really cute. So, it's not, there's no discernible. Oh, I thought just, it said together, but it didn't. Know. It's just beads. And um, I've been wearing it since she gave it to me. We've all been doing a much more group uh, bedtime reading where everyone's out in the living room, all the adults, all the kids, and I've been reading them books. And the girl really has been loving the way that I read where the wild things are. And um, I read it differently than most, I would assume, just because when it gets to certain scenes I really enact certain roles and different things I would imagine that these characters are doing and it's gotten to the point where they all want to be a part of this imaginary <laughs> little world and she's really their own little monster huh? yeah <laughs> yeah a wild thing okay wild thing and um it's been a lot of fun and this kid is so fun and I've been looking online and I found on Etsy that they have a pattern for Max, the boy in the wolf suit that yeah. travels to where the wild things are, <laughs> and uh, three of the wild things characters and wow. crochet in Argurumi. Oh my gosh, I can just imagine. And it kind of has me itching. Um, and I also found on there a unicorn mermaid doll crochet. Oh my gosh. And it just seems like destiny. Yeah. This g little girl loves both of those things and to have them combined is going to be uh, so much fun. And <laughs> I just 
it's like I recognize that there are going to be things that I need to compensate for. This might not be a now situation. Like it might be much more of like to Christmas because I have other things I gotta do. My father's birthday is at the end of the month. I still have my nephew's birthday at the beginning of next month and my mother-in-law's birthday in the middle of the month of next month. And so it's like I have things I gotta get done. But these have really captured my captured my attention and so if you see some little Argarumi characters popping in very soon, you know why. <laughs> um fun things. But I know that I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to make one without making one for the other kids. So I have to really think through Well how you could I'm just make this. the the three monsters each of them could have one but then who's gonna have max you that way when you tell the story they each i guess i could do it that way i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it yet but there is that update so but um i was at the library yesterday and i picked up this book and it's pretty fun um it's by bev asbit yeah bev asbit it's called Living With It, and It being Panic and Anxiety, and it's supposed to be a very interesting take on how to overcome it. Um, she is a therapist, but she also does cartooning on the side, like cartoon articles and stuff, I would imagine, just based on her like, like cart doodles. cartoon style. Yeah. But throughout the whole entire thing, she illustrates what panic and anxiety is and what it is not. How to be able to identify it, how to be able to stop it from manifesting, how to be able to deconstruct that manifestation, how to be able to deal with it, and a kind of like a comic book style of doing it. It's a very interesting way to approach self-help and I really feel like this is very much meant for adults and it's very thin, like you can read it in a sitting. But I'm enjoying the fact that I feel like this would be a reasonable way to kind of conquer some very real things in a population that has panic and anxiety undiagnosed most of the time and diagnosed. And a good way to kind of maybe read it yourself but then approach some of the tactics or some of the passages with your children. Yeah. Or even some of your teenagers. They do have a, some adult themes in here. Not graphic but just subjects. And, um, I don't know, it really just approaches it in such an easy way. Like, I'm used to reading the more in-depth, like, medical-termed, um, psychology books, but this take on just simple self-help kind of just, I don't know, I liked its approach and I figured I would share it for just a, hey, this is what I'm reading right now. As I said before, I have projects obviously on my calendar that I've already explained to you guys what I have to get done. Um, I really need to get on that Godzilla. Not a lot of it has been accomplished. I really need to get that done. I have to find it and pull it out. That's something I plan to get done sometime this week. Just be able to make time, maybe probably tonight, make time to actually find the project in its entirety, all the, uh, all the yarn, and possibly kind of get it organized where it's in a situation where I'm able to pull it out be able to get things. Put it in its own bag and just have it for wherever you go. Bag, tote, it's yeah. big. So yeah. I need to be able to actually plan ahead for it. Yeah. If I don't know where everything is, I'm going to feel rushed. I'm not going to feel like I'm actually right. pre prepared to deal with it. Right. But for now, I do know where all my stuff is for my mother-in-law's blanket. And so I have been actively working on the blocks for her. I know that you have seen these blocks from time to time, so they're nothing new compared to what you've seen before, but this is the one I'm working on right now. Wow, they are really big too, aren't they? Mm -hmm. These are mitered, knitted blocks, and they are a free pattern that I found. And I can, again, link that pattern if you would like it. But um, I'm doing my own take on it with this yarn. Again, this is the Thick and Quick Mandela Lion Brand in... Um, stairwell. Stairwell. 
It's a really, really nice bulky yarn. Feels nice on the hands. And how, how many blocks are you going to make for this blanket? Twelve. Twelve. And I think I have... I think this is number six. Awesome. So, so you're almost halfway done. Right. Like, I've been actively doing these, and these are really quick to whip up if I just sit down and do it. Like, I've had them done in, like, a day and a quarter. So, like be working on it on and off all day and by the following day I'm already yeah. at the end can start another one back up and then I pr with that sort of like quarter mentality of it kind of rounding off into the next day I probably could get maybe like four to five done in a week yeah and possibly really knock it out in the next week then I just need to get the yarn that I was using to block them off kind of like make them all even so that when I'm sewing it together yeah. I'm not sewing it on the knitted ends as they were like this I will have already created a crocheted edge yes. that are all evenly spaced so that it's just going to sew a lot easier sew up together yeah. and then me and James were thinking about this is for his mom this is my husband yeah um we're thinking about at that point seeing what it will need to kind of round it off better I might just from their crochet around it, or I will possibly take the time to knit a border. I don't know. Yeah. But this is a very simple pattern. Once you get the hang of what it's asking you to do, it's really easy to memorize. And, um, you know, I kind of have been doing the decreases in my own way. I'm kind of sloppy, but the, uh, but with the, way that the box are turning out that it's not that bad I know that the way that I plan to lay it out you're not gonna really even notice it and it's just gonna be nice. she's never gonna know and so um, this is supposed to be a blanket that is supposed to be displayed on the back of her couch I want to really make it nice she's been yeah. waiting for it long enough I need to get it done she's been more than gracious about it though she's been very understanding about the fact that there's a lot going on and I do have more demanding projects but I'm hoping to get this done by her birthday as she's obviously invested in it with her money because she's the one who bought all the yarn yeah. so I'm gonna get it done it's not that I'm not gonna get it done it's just a matter of now managing my time because the reality is I probably could simply just keep doing this while I'm watching stuff and have the other project out and times I'm able to just sit down. But with school starting for my daughter and mm -hmm. um, having people in the, more people in the house than I'm used to, keeping up with helping with making a better schedule for all the kids, I know this is all temporary. But it does kind of interrupt your life a bit. And I've had to rearrange my priorities and my crocheting and crafts I've had to step aside. I haven't yeah. been able to do my perler beads. I haven't been able to do all these things. And that's okay. I'm not angry about it. But that's part of the reason that when I'm not able to show a lot, I share with you some of the things like my books that I've been picking up. Because these are the things I am spending my time on and matter to me. And therefore I uh, would like to share with you guys. So... I will hopefully have more to share with you next week on episode 78, but other than that, would you like to pull up? Yeah. You want me to pull that up? Yeah. My mom has, has this notebook with all these verses that she kind of just finds over time, and she had one that was only the first half of a verse. Of a proverb. Of a proverb, and I was just sitting there being like, Mom, what is this? What is the second part? And um, I, I like the top part because it's usually the the positive point, mm -hmm. and then the the second part of it's usually the negative, or what will happen if you don't do the top part? Yeah, it's kind of like this is the promise, but the foreshadowing for the one that isn't willing to put in the work. Yeah, so you'll see what we're talking about when you when she reads it. So this verse is in Proverbs 13, verse 19, and I'm using the New Living Translation version. It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them. So obviously the moral is pretty clear. You know, it's pleasant to see dreams come true. It's nice to have that satisfaction to be able to feel um, content and complete. And the things that you want to be able to accomplish in your time. 
but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them when we're not willing to do what we need to do to get them. You gotta do the work. You know, yeah. you, you reap what you sow, and if you're not willing to put in the work for the harvest, you're yeah. not gonna be able to get anything out of it. It's right. kind of like, yeah, it's nice to be able to have things turn out. Kind of requires you to be able to get that done. You're right. You're not gonna get a blanket done if you don't put the work in. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the scarf done if you don't put the work in. And you you just, it's all, it's a pleasant situation when you do. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why I like that verse. It was, because the, the, the one that I had, and it's not the same version, but it said, a desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. And I just thought, yeah, and once you get something done it's it's really sweet on the inside for you to get that done mm -hmm. and um but i like the new living translation uh version as well but if you don't put that time in and you don't set aside the other things the 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 cares of the world or the things that that bog you down you're just not going to get it done you know what you said sweet i know that that's like a you know a determination of like flavor but like or even just as a like this is nice sweet is generally a, um, a synonym to this is nice yeah. this is it's pleasant yes um, but in science they have been able to determine that if you and your brain experience something and it will translate to your taste buds what you think the situation almost tastes like based off of like oh. that's why when you hear something like that's like really gross you're just like man this makes me feel like i'm gonna throw up oh same with pleasant situations man this is so nice it's like it's like i can taste it yeah yeah this is actually wow that's, that's really an actual cool. thing it actually causes like the glands and your like tongue and stuff to like almost have a placebo, fa uh, placebo effect, it's kind of like I almost could smell it, mm -hmm. I almost could taste it. Yeah. Or it's that as if, so or cool. it's like, you do. Like, yeah. especially when something seems gross. Like, it's like, right, yeah. oh man, like, I can't get that taste out of my mouth now. Right, right. Wow. That's something to think about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so kind of like the, yeah. the way that yours reads it, a desire accomplished is sweet to the soul to the inside of you to the to the core of your being it almost seems very healing yeah yeah so again proverbs 13 19 we don't know what her version is but the one that i'm going to read from you again is from the new living translation it is pleasant to see dreams come true but fools refuse to turn from evil cannot obtain them right or but fools refuse to turn from evil to attain them. Right. And and the last thing we want to do is not accomplish our goals and or uh, become foolish for not doing it. So um, we're just we're just here to positively influence and positively encourage, um, ins encourage inspire, um, do all those things for for this channel and, and to help you um, gain momentum in your own projects. You know, I think it, you know, there was someone who once said, you don't, you hardly regret the things that you do do compared to the things that you don't do. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's something that you're kind of waiting on and you're wondering whether to do. Right. Just acknowledge that as long as you're not just trying to attain it the easy way. Right. And you actually put in the effort. Right. It isn't a bad thing to try to have something good yeah. happen. A goal that you're trying to reach happen that is healthy. Yeah. And not at any risk of hurting anything. Right. So. Yeah. So make sure you stick around to the end. Um of this video. We are um, probably going to close now, but 
Right, there, at, right after this, be there's going to be a clip of the entirety of the Mandela Afghan. And it's really pretty, and you're not going to want to miss that. So, as always, we love you guys. We're thankful for you guys tagging along for this video. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have more to share next week. But as always, we hope that you have a good rest of your week, that your projects go well. And yes. we hope that you stitch your way to mental health. Hi guys, I just wanted to get on here real quick and let you see the Mandela um, afghan that I made in its entirety. It is wider than it is long, but I figure it could go on a couch and on the back of the couch and stuff. And then if someone or a couple of people wanted to cuddle up underneath it, they could. So all these different colors are paired with just a neutral and these these mandelas are so fun to work with because when they change colors it's just so subtle and so nice and I just love the way it turned out so I just wanted to do this real quick and I'm glad you stayed till the end so that you could see it and you have a good day bye